सो डियर स्टूडेंट्स इन अवर लास्ट सेक्शन वी हैव सीन द मेमरी एंड इट्स टाइप्स एंड टुडे वी विल सी द वेरियस कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ हार्डवेयर आर्किटेक्चर लाइक क्रॉप सर्किटरी वॉचडॉक टाइमर विच इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज रीसेट सर्किटरी चिप सिलेक्ट इनपुट आउटपुट डिवाइसेस सो स्टार्टिंग विद द क्लॉक सर्किटरी द प्रोसेसर हैज टू बी गिवन द क्लॉक इनपुट सो दैट and uh, the processor has to be given the clock input and it is given through the pins so that it generate the clock signals and uh, it uh, crystal and oscillator as required for the processor so whatever signal we want to generate whatever clock signal we want to generate that is generated through one of the pins and for that the particular clock circuitry is used which is responsible to give the clock input to one of the pin of our chip that is nothing but clock circuitry which is responsible for uh, generating the clock signal now next is the watchdog timer watchdog timer is also called as reset circuitry because its main responsibility is to reset the circuit so most embedded system do not have the reset button many embedded system does not have the reset button itself so due to some software or hardware error or any particular condition or state uh, the system has reached so there should be one way according to that way it should be reset itself so it is a need that arises when the processor should get reset itself and the watchdog timer is responsible for this the watchdog timer does the resetting the its main work its main responsibility is to reset the circuit whenever any our circuit reaches to any particular state or any particular condition then the reset circuitry is done by the watchdog timer that is nothing but watchdog timer and as its uh, main responsibilities of resetting it is also called as reset circuitry now the next is chip select as many peripherals share common buses we have seen the various buses na so many peripherals share the common buses so the processor must be able to uniquely identify the peripheral with which it is communicating and for that purpose chip select is used now we know that there are various buses by using which the communication is conducted in between the peripherals so for identifying the peripheral is communicating with which the chip select is used now the next is input output devices now input output devices can be characterized categorized as program input and interrupt driven input output in program input output the processor sends the data to the device on its own so the input devices are responsible for giving the input and the output devices are responsible for producing or displaying the output so the first one is dma dma is nothing but the dynamic memory access generally the data transfer between the input output devices and memory is coordinated by the cpu in case whenever the handling is done of input output devices by the processor is not sufficient then the data transfer between the input output device and memory can take place directly and which is known as direct dynamic memory access where the data transfer between input output device and the memory is uh, taken place directly that is nothing but the dynamic memory access now the next is sensors and transducers so the embedded system needed to connect with the real life information equipments and for the uh, connecting or for sensing the various uh, temperature or uh, smoke the equipments small equipments are used which are uh, basically responsible for generating the signals and by that signals we can uh, sense or we can have the particular output that is nothing but sensor and transducers which generates the signal so that we can have any particular information through them 
there are many examples like smoke sensor is responsible for finding the smoke in the particular environment moisture sensor is there which can identify the moisture from the soil they are nothing but the sensors and transducers now the next is adc and dac now as we know adc is nothing but analog to digital converter and dac is nothing but the digital to analog so the analog signals produced by sensors and transducer have one important characteristic that is nothing but the bandwidth so whenever we want to convert the analog signal into uh, digital the adc is used and vice versa whenever we want to convert digital to analog the dac devices are used now the function keypad is responsible for giving the particular input through the keypad next is led led is nothing but the light emitting diodes which are the smallest devices that are used in the particular circuit mainly leds are used very widely in the embedded system they are having various colors and by using which we can have the output in our circuit by connecting them in the circuit we can produce the output and we can see whether the circuitry is properly working or not and the leds are very smallest in work but uh, their uh, uh, output generation is high so they are very uh, widely used because it displays or indicates the output very nicely the next one is lcd that is liquid crystal display liquid crystal display is sandwiched by two sheets for polarizing material by polarizing material it is used to display the status or information or whatever output we want to display that can be done by using lcd so these are also the various components of hardware architecture so the hardware architecture of embedded system contains all the components which are responsible for building the particular embedded system for giving the input and for producing the output thank you